it's Elena and I'm back with another video and today we're going to discuss the rule of recognition which is presented by Hart in his book The Concept of Law and it is basically a theory of what makes law law um, and we're going to take a look at that and how it connects to his overall thesis of legal positivism and we're going to look a little bit at what that means and then how his theory actually fits that. So yeah, let's get into it. Okay, so before we can actually look at his theory, we have to look at the points of view that he gives us as options. So these point of views are points of views you can have on a legal system. And the key point of view that we need to know about is the internal point of view. And so that internal point of view is the perspective of commitment to the rules. So commitment to the rules of the legal system. It doesn't mean, you know, you have any commitment, like a feeling in your heart or anything like that. It is just that you show certain behavioral dispositions, which make you a person with the internal point of view. So these behavioral markers of somebody who has the internal point of view are compliance with the rule in your own conduct. So you follow the rule on a daily basis, basically, you know, you comply with it. Um, then you criticize deviance from the norm. So if someone else doesn't follow the rule, then you criticize them for it. Um, and the third behavioral disposition is that you see such criticism when other people don't comply and you criticize them for it as justified. So you think they should follow the rule and you think you are you know, in the right when you're pointing out that they should have followed the rule. And those are the behavioral dispositions that somebody with the internal point of view has. And that is very different to somebody who just obeys the law because, well, they don't want to go to jail. <laughs> um, because that person, you know, may not necessarily look at someone else not following the law and be like, hey, dude, you should follow this rule. Um, they wouldn't do that necessarily. They just follow the law for their own gain and just, you know, not ending up in jail. Um, and a lot of civilians are probably in the second category. But that's not necessarily a problem for Hart's theory. So why is that internal point of view so important? Because Hart requires one group in society to have that point of view. And that group is officials. So when I say officials, what I mean are people basically, you know, within the government, within the judiciary, etc. Um, who are connected in that sense to the law. So they need to accept certain rules. So what are these rules that officials have to have this internal point of view towards. It's the rules contained within the rule of recognition. So although Hart calls it the rule of recognition, it is actually an array of secondary rules. And secondary rules are rules which in their content presuppose the existence of other rules. Now, it's really important to make this distinction. They presuppose it in their content. Not the norm itself presupposes the existence of other rules. Very often if you, you know, think about it, for example, if the law says it is unlawful to kill someone, well, yeah, that, that probably presupposes the existence that there's someone who's going to enforce that, like the police. Um, but the rule itself doesn't say that. It's content. Its content doesn't say, you know, somebody should intervene, blah, blah, blah. It doesn't do anything like that. Whereas if you take a rule like the court should have the jurisdiction to try people for these crimes, then that rule clearly presupposes in its content that these crimes are written down somewhere else in other rules. So that is a secondary rule. So secondary rules are really important for structuring society because primary norms are all duty imposing. So they tell you, for example, don't kill someone. That's the most basic example. Um, but secondary norms are the ones which then ensure that there is something like a trial in court um, in case somebody does break the law. So the heart gives you three types of secondary norms. So there are the rules of adjudication um, and they are for the quote-unquote authoritative assessment of violations and for authoritatively imposed sanctions. So that's basically, if you break the law, this is what's going to happen. Um, then there are the rules of change. So those are the rules of legislative power. How are we going to change the law? Somebody needs to give parliament the power to make law. Um, those are all secondary norms. Otherwise, you have no legislature. And that would be a big mess. So you can see secondary norms are really important. And then the third one 
is rule of recognition. Um, so those are the rules we're interested in. And those are the secondary norms for the assertment of norms. So determining what are the rules? How do we figure out if something is a rule in the law? And that's why we need the secondary norms within the rule of recognition. Those are the norms which help us figure out if something is law or not. So for example, in certain systems, something can't be a law unless it has been passed by a certain body, like for example, parliament with a certain majority, and then maybe it needs to be approved by someone else. Certainly here in the UK, for example, it needs to go through two houses in parliament, it needs to be approved by the queen. There are quite a few requirements. Um, so that's what the rule of recognition is about. It's about looking at a certain alleged rule and figuring out whether it's actually a legal rule or not. And the officials need to be committed to the rules contained in the rule of recognition. So to the rules for figuring out what the law is. Otherwise you have a big mess if officials think that someone other than parliament can make law um, without being authorized by parliament for example. You know that would create big uncertainty. Um, so that's why these officials, they all need to be committed to it and then you have the rule of recognition. So the rule of recognition is a question of fact, but that fact, whether the rule of recognition, whether something is contained in the rule of recognition and whether it exists, that fact is determined by the commitment through the internal point of view of officials which accept this rule of recognition. So it is not just something that just, you know, came into existence. It is something that needs to be practiced. It is something that needs to be accepted by officials. And the reason we only expect officials to have this, you know, commitment to the rule of recognition is because they are the ones engaging with it. They are the ones who are, you know, working with the law, working with changing the law, etc. And so they will actually have the opportunity to have this type of commitment. Most people, you know, in their daily life don't think about the law like, so is this really a law, right? If somebody just tells you the speed limit is this on the street, you're not going to be like, okay, so who laid down this rule? Okay, this local authority, who gave them the power to lay down this rule? A secretary of state. Who gave the secretary of state the power to give the local authority this power? Oh, parliament. Why does Parliament have this power? Well, because Parliament is sovereign. And so at some point, you arrive at this end point. Parliament is sovereign, full stop. You don't have another rule to go to. Because we went from, you know, one rule conferring power to another rule conferring power. And at some point, you just end up at this fact. Parliament is sovereign. And you can't go beyond it, but you also can't give an actual other rule justifying it. And that's when you arrive at the rule of recognition. It's the most basic one. Um, and most civilians don't go through all these steps, right? If somebody just tells you you have to do this because that's the law, well then you have to do it. <laughs> but officials, they will actually investigate these things. And that is why we expect this type of commitment only from them. Civilians, from them we only expect a degree of compliance with the law. Now, obviously, even officials will disagree on what the rule of recognition contains. Um, and there is a lot of disagreement about it. Um, for example, William Wade has argued that the rule of recognition has changed in the UK um, since it became a member of the European Union. Um, and, well, the Supreme Court clearly disagrees with him, um, as you can see in Miller. But um, there is debate about what is actually in the rule of recognition. Kramer points out that he doesn't expect perfect commitment to the internal point of view from everybody. There will be, you know, some bad apples, um, and that's okay. Um, but there needs to be a vast majority of officials having this internal point of view towards the rule of recognition. Now, very often the rule of recognition is codified, so it's written down the law, um, usually in a constitution. The UK is an example of that, not being the case. Um, but in many countries it is. So in that case you have a codified version of the rule of recognition and you have the rule of recognition and it's yeah kind of philosophical state I guess. Um, and those two aren't always the same because sometimes people make mistakes when drafting and sometimes you know 
things kind of get lost um, later on in interpretation. So the question then is, which one is the rule of recognition? Because suddenly you have two different ones. So once again, Kramer looks at this and um, he says there is the rule of recognition in its foundational state. So that is the rule of recognition, which isn't codified. It just exists in a system. And then there's the rule of recognition in its so-called epiphenomenal state. And that rule of recognition is the codified one. And if those two differ, then that one still remains the rule of recognition, the foundational one, even if the constitution doesn't agree. But this can change. If the officials start having an internal point of view towards the epiphenomenal or codified state, um, which is different to the foundational one, then the foundational one ceases to become the rule of recognition because the internal point of view of the officials is directed at the codified version. And that is how Hart allows for, you know, potential changes within the rule of recognition. The rule of recognition can change if the internal point of view of officials changes. If they start to believe that something else is contained in the rule of recognition, they start to act like it, then the rule of recognition has changed indeed. Um, so Hart doesn't think that once the rule of recognition is laid down, it has to be followed forever in this state it can change. Now what you're going to notice is this theory just focuses on rules, right? A rule to determine what the rules of the legal system are. It doesn't say anything about the content of these rules. So, you know, is the rule something like a Nazi law that Jews should not be allowed to marry people of certain other races? Or is it a rule that human dignity is untouchable like um, the basic law of Germany says? It doesn't tell you anything about that. Um, so these rules could be completely immoral. And that is why Hart is a legal positivist. He says law and morality aren't necessarily connected. That doesn't mean they never are. They certainly can be. Um, but he says they don't have to be. And that is the key thesis of legal positivism. And his theory very much aligns with that. Now Hart doesn't deny that Usually in every legal system, we see certain somewhat moral rules, like for example, don't kill someone. Um, and he calls this the minimum content of natural law. Now natural law is basically the absolute opposite of legal positivism in the sense that it thinks there is always a connection between law and morality in the sense that law has to conform with certain principles. Like for example, law can't endorse genocide. Or things like that. Now, please note, um, I am generalizing natural law a lot. Um, there are a lot of different theories um, and not all of them agree on what these principles are, um, but that's just an example. Um, so they think there are certain principles which the rules can't breach, the rules of a legal system. Whereas legal positivism would say, sorry guys, law doesn't have to be moral. Um, but Obviously, every society shares some rules which we consider to be based on morality, like not killing someone. And this is the minimum content of natural law. Now, the minimum content of natural law is not a concession of legal positivists to natural law theorists. Because the minimum content of natural law does say things like, don't kill anybody. But it doesn't have to give that or extend that protection to everybody. So while the minimum content of natural law will be present in every legal system, according to legal positivists, it doesn't have to be afforded to everybody. So you could certainly argue the minimum content of natural law was present in Nazi Germany for Aryans, as they were called in that system. It wasn't afforded to people who were, for example, Jewish or homosexual or um, black many different groups that were persecuted within that system. But the minimum content of natural law was there. So you can see that while there is, you know, a degree of acceptance that some rules based on morality will be there, these rules don't have to be extended to everybody. And in that sense, they will lack substantive justice because they will not be given to everybody. So that's why Law and morality don't really have to be connected according to legal positivists because it's not moral to, you know, extend those moral protections to some people and then be like, oh yeah, you guys know. Um, 
that doesn't work. So that's why, even though Hart says we will have some of these rules and we will see them in every legal system, because we don't necessarily extend them to everybody and we don't have to in order to make it law, we are having a system which doesn't necessarily have to connect law with morality. And his theory is very reflective of that because it focuses on the rules and rules for determining what the rules are instead of saying here are the rules for determining what the rules are but also it can't be a rule if it breaches a certain principle. That would be a natural law approach and not a legal positivist approach. The legal positivist only asks is there a rule that makes this a legal rule? And that rule for making it a legal rule you may have to you know go through certain stages as I said finding different conferrals of power to different authorities but in the end you will arrive at this very basic rule in every system which tells you how law is made and that's the rule of recognition that rule determines whether a rule is actually a legal rule and yeah that is the rule of recognition in a nutshell um as always it is not enough to watch a video of mine um for a revision these are really just overviews um, I largely make these videos for myself um, to just, you know, go back to watching this to just get an introduction to the topic again. But this is by no means a replacement for doing the readings because there is a lot more to Hart's theory and you can't cover that in a short video. So, um, yeah, but I hope you guys found this introduction helpful and I'm really sorry that it took me so long to come back to this channel, but I'm back. So, yeah. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching. Have a nice day. Bye.